Hello aspirants, I hope you are having a great day. Today in this video, we will discuss a very important area of general studies where most of the students face difficulty. We will talk about the approach to cover important government schemes and important global institutions. If you have gone through previous year questions, you must have found two to three questions based on government schemes and institutions, right? So after this discussion, I hope you will feel much more comfortable with these two particular aspects of general studies. Now, before we start discussing them in detail, we must understand the portion of syllabus from which questions on schemes can be asked in the examination. Because these schemes should be covered with relation to particular topics in the syllabus and not in a silo. First, schemes come under the governance portion of the prelim syllabus and particularly from the public policy subhead. Secondly, from the Indian economy part, they can be asked from subtopics like uh, poverty, inclusion and social sector initiatives. So I hope that's clear. So you must cover important schemes related to these particular subtopics along with their necessary theory. Okay. So now let's understand what are the types of schemes that can be asked in the examination. <clears throat> Since uh, UPSC is an all India service examination, you don't need any state specific specific schemes, right? No, uh, no need to uh, remember the state specific schemes. You only uh, need the central schemes. Now these central scheme can be of two types. First type is called central sector schemes, which are planned, designed and funded by the central government completely. And then there are centrally sponsored schemes where both center and states contribute funds in different proportions. So funding is the major differentiating factor between these two. Now that you know, basi uh, know what basically these schemes are, let's understand what you need to know as far as the prelims is concerned. First thing you need to know is if the scheme is a central sector or if it is a centrally sponsored scheme. That is something that you need to know. So there you don't need to know the amount of funding or the layout of funds for each scheme. Those things are not necessary. You just need to know if it if that particular scheme is a central sector scheme or a centrally sponsored scheme. Next to next thing to know is who will implement these schemes. It can be a ministry or a particular government agency. That that is uh, something that you need to know. The next thing is to note is uh, what are the objective of the scheme or the problems that it is trying to address. Then who will be benefited from these schemes? That is the beneficiaries of the scheme. Then there are certain typical features associated with each scheme. You just need to glance through them very briefly. So that's all you need to know. Nothing more than this will be asked in the prelims. <clears throat> so let's understand these points with an example of Ayushman Bharat scheme, which has been repeatedly asked in your prelims examination. As you know, health is a concurrent subject. So both states and center will provide funds. So this will be a centrally sponsored scheme. And the, uh, then Ministry of Health and Family Welfare will oversee its implementation and the National Health Authority, that is the NHA, will implement it on ground. The objective is to provide health insurance to poor households, right? Then there are beneficiaries and certain key features related to this scheme. This is how you can make your own notes regarding the schemes. I'll also attach the schemes PDF in the description box, which you can refer later. Now that you understand uh, what you need to do in terms of schemes, Let's understand uh, the, how the questions are asked in the prelims examination. As you can see, the question to your left, that is the one zero question number 105, is from 2022, which asks you to identify a scheme which is not related to poverty alleviation. The answer can be derived from the objectives of the scheme. Right answer for this will be Ayushman Bharat, as, is in, as it intends to uh, provide health insurance. Rest of the options have an objective of poverty alleviation. Then the question number 27 to your right from 2021 asks you about the beneficiary of the scheme, which is available for 10 crore poor and vulnerable families. And then the question on Dindal Antadaya scheme is basically based on its features and beneficiaries, which is easy to answer even if you don't remember them exactly. The answer will be C as it is available for rural poor households except agricultural laborers as there are separate schemes related to agriculture which is implemented by Ministry of Agriculture, right? 
so basically the idea here is that with just two to three things in mind you can solve most of the schemes related questions and as you see there are no randomness in questions too most of these questions will uh, come either from health or poverty alleviation so this is something that you need to keep in your mind now see the uh, look at the question number 105 uh, it asks you about the features and beneficiary of pradhan mantri shram yogi mandhan scheme which is a voluntary pension scheme for or unorganized sector workers like street vendors small shop owners etc so by just understanding the options you can easily solve these types of questions right so that's all that you need to uh, remember as far as uh, the uh, or you need to do as far as the schemes are concerned now let's come to the uh, important global institutions that are there so the related topics from uh, topic topics from uh, syllabus are from economic portion of sustainable development uh, poverty and inclusion where global agencies like uh, united nation imf and world bank have to be covered then there are certain regional groupings like g20 opec certain trade related groupings like uh, rcep south asia free trade agreement or, or sapta etc which come under your current affair portion so while covering the global multilateral agency or institutions you need to know uh, you know you, you need to know their headquarters certain important reports that they publish such as world economic outlook of imf world development report by world bank and so on and so forth in these reports they rank countries you just need to know the top performing and worst performing country along with india's india's rank that's all that you need for the examination for regional or global groupings you need to know about the headquarters uh, the uh, mem uh, member countries and if india is a member or not of that particular group so that's all that you need to prepare for the examination so isn't isn't that very easy to prepare let's understand them through examples <clears throat> uh, the first question asks you uh, the top performing country as per the world competitiveness report by institute for management development or they may ask india's rank in this index and so on uh, the question on the regional groupings like safta where question is about who who is and who is not a member country then rcp as we know india has not joined it yet and the answer is based on if india has joined it yet or not Th that's the question is all about and uh, that's how these questions are going to be so these are very easy to prepare and should not take more than 2 to 3 hours to complete and make short pointers on them based on the facts that i have mentioned earlier in this video right i hope now you are feeling comfortable about these two most neglected areas and that you will not skip it this time and you'll you'll do your due diligence so we regularly update our questions in our prelims test series by analyzing search patterns which is very similar to that of gsi prelims if you have not joined at joined that yet you can do so uh, and check your progress in a time bound manner so that's all for today my friends if you want any particular video on any particular aspect of your preparation please let us know through the comments and i will see you in the next video